Here we are, day 16 of Video a Day February. My name is Deborah Cooper. I serve as the host of the Debsterism channel and a relationship advice columnist since the early 1990s and operate the blog survivingdating.com and one called askheartbeat.com which deal with relationships as well as this YouTube channel. So you're welcome to go on those blogs and read up on some of the mistakes that other people made. In this video we're continuing with the one from the 15th where we discuss the first eight traits that uh, that would indicate that a guy that you may be dating or interested in dating or that's interested in you has very low self-esteem. Men manifest their self-esteem in some ways that are similar to women but in other ways they're very protective of their ego so there will be certain other signs that they exhibit that women just really don't. So what I wanted to do is pick up where I left off. We're going to start with uh, point number eight which is men's inability to handle rejection or criticism. Now if somebody has good or what we call high self-esteem they know that they're a, you know a decent person they know that they're pretty great they know that that people would like them and so no matter how they might get rejected or how what someone else's opinion is of them they still feel good about themselves because they know what they are they don't really let other people's opinions affect them too much but men that have low self-esteem don't have that kind of confidence so they are not able to handle rejection they can't really handle criticism um, they tend to withdraw whether than take a risk and risk uh, getting their feelings hurt, risk getting rejected so they may not ask a girl for her phone number or if they don't you know talk to you in a, in a way that makes sense a way that would be uh, that would inspire you to give him your number they will come at you with some crass rude stuff because in their head you've already rejected them in the in their head they're not worthy of you and so what they want to do is bring you down and so they'll say nasty snarky disgusting things to you or they try to touch you inappropriately which commu would communicate to you that you aren't worth them giving you respect and talking to you nicely you see how that goes um, these guys though um, like say you know they come at you and you say that you know you aren't interested or no thank you or you know I have a, a man already whatever these are the kind that'll jump back and want to call you names sometimes they even go into more violence responses which I will be addressing in another video but there are a couple of cases just recently in the news uh, a Mary Spears who was shot three times by a guy who was hounding her at a bar. She was there with her fiance and her family after coming from a funeral. And this guy wanted her number and he wanted her name. And she told him, you know, I have a, I'm, I'm engaged, I'm, no, no thank you. And he just would not let up. So even when their whole family got ready to leave when the club closed, he follows her outside and, you know, was still trying to get her number. So by then the fiance steps in and they get into it. So dude pulls out a gun and shoots Mary. She starts running, he shoots her in the head two more times so she ends up dying on the scene all because an idiot couldn't stand the fact that she did not want him to have her number and she did not want him to have her name and this is a repetitive pattern with men like Elliot Rogers and, and there's dozens of them they, they just they cannot handle re, re, uh, rejection well and they respond with violence or else they want to they want to rape you threaten to rape you or they will stalk you and um, they just don't want to let go you know sometimes it's somebody you would never even like her she don't she didn't even know the dude never met the dude before don't know the dude's name wouldn't know nothing about him but it could very often have been like an ex-lover an ex-husband ex-boyfriend whatever and these guys just don't want to let go so we're going to talk about that but that's going to be another video but that is a key component in the way that men with extremely low self-esteem respond to rejection with criticism you know they just feel small and will fire back with things like where they're trying to negate the points that you make we see this a lot online you know they talk about they'll say women and generalize women when you're we're talking about what men do right now they try to flip it around to get it off themselves and start talking about women classic 
Okay, number nine, perfectionism. These guys want, I mean, in actuality, um, they just don't feel good about themselves. Men with low self-esteem have this need to see everything that they do and everything that they say, everything that they think is perfect. Everything that they have, I mean, it's just really unrealistic because nobody lives like that. I don't know where they get that from. So they operate under the belief that if they're perfect, that people, you know, mainly women, will like them more. So they go out of their way to always be like extra well-groomed and to make sure they don't say the wrong thing. I mean, it's nice in a certain sense, but in another sense, if you're trying to have a relationship with a guy like this, uh, he, he, his, he needs to have a woman that's going to be, quote, perfect too, because in that way, other men will think more of him they'll think that you know him having this perfect woman on his arm and in his bed and this perfect house and this perfect car and these perfect clothes and these perfect Jordans are all going to make him seem like he's more than what he is to other men so in his mind if he's not perfect then he's nothing you know he he just does not want to accept that he's a person with flaws and who makes mistakes just like everybody else and these guys get into a real tailspin about this too it's unbelievable and these are the ones that try to correct you you know they want to talk about what clothes you should wear what hairstyle you should wear that you should lose weight gain weight get plastic surgery all of this kind of stuff because in his mind he's trying to make you perfect you know he since he doesn't accept himself or like himself as he is then he's going to want you to have the same kind of quest for quote perfection that he has so he's going to put all his beliefs onto you it's really Oh, it's just exhausting trying to be with somebody like that. And if you, you know, tell him that you know you're not going to do all of that kind of stuff, uh, he he really struggles with it. He he feels like everyone should be able to improve, and so he's on this quest. He's never accepting himself for who and what he is, and he's never going to accept you for who and what you are either. So you need to understand that, and uh, you know, uh, be, uh, put him on a on a leash. These guys, you know, just full of self-doubt. I don't know what, how else to say it. I mean, they won't, they won't take on any challenges. They really stay in a safe zone, like career-wise, um, with their friends. They're, they have a really hard time moving on from things and embracing things that are new. They're very angry at themselves a lot as well. So um, that's that's. I'm just kind of loose, loosely formed, but I put it all under the umbrella of of uh, perfectionism then we move on to the guys who doubt themselves they are they limit themselves um, I started talking about that actually in the last comment they limit themselves by not move they don't progress I mean these are the guys that you'll see they they're in their 40s and they're still dressing like in in jerseys and and sneakers and stuff like they did when they were 19. it's like dude have you looked at yourself in a mirror lately that gut that you have that is not cute in a jersey it looks like you're pregnant or have a tumor or something you know but dress to just put on a suit so that you you know covers up some of that and makes you look like you know you got some class and style they also uh they may not finish school they will have the same job forever and ever, never look for a promotion. They never try to improve themselves, improve their situation. You know, they're like try for a promotion at work or try to, you know, read some books and learn something. Maybe go back to school, pick up a new hobby, a new trade. They don't do anything. They limit their sel themselves by the potential. And they put themselves down, you know, they doubt themselves and they will very often they don't want to try because, once again, they're afraid of failure. So these are the people that you see just kind of drifting through life. You know, they may go to work. They have some little Mickey Mouse-ass job, and they go to work. And then they may go to church. And they may go visit their friends and mama or hang out playing cards or dominoes or something. And go to the barbecue pit and watch TV, sports on TV. And that's it. That's their life. For the next 40 years, as you look out, that's all they're going to be doing. They have no purpose other than to just exist. And to me, that's a very sad state of existence, but they're afraid to do anything different. And sometimes it's even, uh, it even applies to food. I heard a lot of people say things like, 
when I was down in Texas, you know, being from the San Francisco area, I had eaten food and had friends from every corner of the world. So when I got down there, I'm telling you, it was like an eye opener. It was like I was in a foreign country and it was just another state. But people, I would be eating stuff. I'm, you know, talking, I want to go to a Sichuan restaurant. I want some, some Thai food. I want, you know, some things I'm used to eating at home. And what? You eating that? That could be dog. How you know what that is? Oh, my God. I'm like, can you say country bumpkin? And uh, it was just amazing to me. But see, again, they were self-limiting themselves. And these were men and women. It was unbelievable. Point 11. Number 11. Trade 11. Whatever it is. Um, these are what I call the pity partiers. Oh, my God. You just want to play like the little mini violin with them all the time. They are very angry at themselves. They... They, I mean, they, they self-sabotage themselves too, but they feel that they're failures, that they're good for nothing, and that's why they hate themselves. They have, uh, they think that they deserve to be abused and, and treated poorly, and they're weak and they're pathetic, and it's just like, you just, <laughs> you just look at them and just like, oh my God, what are you, what are you saying here? They never, they really believe that they could never meet your standards no matter what they do, so they don't even try. These are the dudes that will get online and they'll tell you, oh, you know, you women have standards. You know, your standards are too high. Your standards are unrealistic. And it's really not. What you have is not unrealistic. They just know that they can't meet them. And they know that they, no matter how hard try, they, hard they try, they never will meet them. And so they try to make it be something wrong with you instead of being wrong with them. Instead of saying, you know, those are some good stretch goals for me. I should really try to, you know, up my game and incorporate some of those things into my program as I grow and improve myself as a man. Uh-uh. The words and them thoughts will never cross their mind. You know, they're very, very frustrated with themselves and because of their self-doubt. And they'll, they'll turn it into criticism on you. And they'll label all women as too demanding or have a standard that's too high or they, all women are too picky. And then any woman that he can reach with his keyboard or with his voice, he's going to declare that women of other races or from other countries are better than American women or better than black women. And these guys are angry and they're resentful. And they really feel like they aren't worth a quality woman's time or attention. But somehow they have to flip it around so it's her fault that he's without a partner because he doesn't know she doesn't know how to choose a good man like me in reality well sensible women passing by because of his his judgmental attitude and his negativity well, nobody want to be bothered with that i mean it's like you can have unrealistic expectations certainly some women do and most men do as, as well but that doesn't mean that you know, somebody won't like you for who and what you are, but unless you have the courage and the self-confidence to demonstrate who and what you are to other people and to the world, then you're always putting up a front and you can never relax into a relationship. You're always nervous that you're going to be found out. And these guys will, you know, so they don't, they don't want to show who they are because they're really terrified of themselves and their weaknesses and their faults and their lackings. And so they try to make it be that something's wrong with you that they don't have anyone. And this is the basic premise for the MGTOW and the TFL guys. They, the, the low self-esteem, all of them. I mean, just, I've never met one yet. I'll give some more examples of how they, they fall into these categories as we move on. So number, tw number 12, yes. These dudes hide behind drugs and alcohol. They have a, what I call a, a booze-induced bravado because as long as they're like regular you know like at work where they're not drinking and smoking weed or whatever they're um you know just quiet and 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 just boring and just ill like you don't even really notice them but honey let them get a drink in them let them get them some, some herbalicious going on and see how they change up and um they need that because otherwise they don't they don't feel like, uh-oh, my phone is wanting to talk now. Um, they feel like, you know, nobody would want to be bothered with them. And they're right. Nobody does. And so by the time they get a drink and become the party animal, you know, it gives them courage. And they will go and then they will ask women to dance. But then they're drunk and their breath, you know, they're like spewing spittle all over and stuff or falling down or saying crazy stuff because, you know, they're half drunk out their mind. Um, it just doesn't work well. But that's one way that they get to feel 
like they have courage and like they uh, have the ability to to deal with women when in reality they really don't they're actually intimidated by by women who are rather progressive and uh, like if you went up to them and asked them to dance or you know ask them for their number or something they would think less of you for doing that and these are the guys that also complain that you know women make as much as men do these days and they should be able to take us out and you know I'm not doing nothing for a B and yeah 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 all this other stuff and and uh, in reality you know that makes them look very shabby in the eyes of women which is kind of like a vicious cycle for them you know they're angry that they don't have anybody so then they talk about women poorly and treat them badly and you know call them names and all stuff and then so the women ignore them and then they get they get, they get more angry that the women are ignoring them so it's like this you know this endless cycle a hamster wheel of pain and rejection for them because they don't have enough sense to get off of it just dumb okay number 13 uh where am i i don't even know where i am anymore mm mm Oh, okay, I'm guessing it's this one. I don't know. Living in the world of the past. They live in the past. Um, these guys, I don't know. This is just a part, another part of the pity party. Um, they fill their minds with just negative thoughts of the past. These guys, it's like they just cannot let go of shit these are the dudes you meet or you see online or you talking to them whatever and they keep bringing up how some woman cheated on them in the past how they know a friend when they was in the 12th grade who got cheated on how the girlfriend that they had when they was in the 8th grade rejected them or heard them say something cruel to them they can't let go and it's like you know the, the ex-wife did this to them and, and she took all their money okay how many years ago was that 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 happened you still talking about it? It was 15 years ago. Can we move on? That kind of stuff. You know, and it's like, I don't care what you did about what you did with for some other bitch. And now you're telling me that's the reason why you don't want to do anything for me. That don't have shit to do with me. I, it's like getting, being arrested and put in jail for a crime you didn't commit. Now, enough black men have experience with that shit. You should know how that feels. So you don't come at a woman charging her with a crime based on what some other woman did and not giving her a clean slate upon which to establish a relationship with you. And that's, that's what they do, though. They stay in the past. It's just the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life. And I, I, I can't stand that. I hate those people that, you know, they sit there. I had a boyfriend like that. Oh, my God. He used to sit in this little chair, this little green chair. I used to call it his throne because he used to swear he was like a king of the castle or something. And he would sit in the dark in this room, in the living room. And, you know, he would be reminiscing about horrible things that happened to him or mean things people did to him or said to him when he was growing up. Okay, nigga, wait. How old are you now? He was like 20 years old and you still think about some shit that happened when you was eight and he and he would get like all worked up about it all over again it was just it was unbelievable i had never met anybody like that and um so i had to let dude go i'm like oh no <laughs> we, we can't do this um okay then let's move on to number 14 the dudes that are approval seekers they succumb to peer pressure I see a lot of this, you know, they, you, these are the dudes that, like, say somebody has a quote, uh, you know, somebody's a rapper or something, right? And they go into these clubs and they drive around in their new vehicles and stuff. Have you ever noticed how many dudes hang with them? And then these other dudes will be like, yeah, we doing this and we doing that. It's not we, Negro, it's the one who's, you know, the, the one, the entertainer person. You just hang your hangers on. And uh, I think that group, what TLC used to call them, scrubs. <laughs> But these guys, I mean, sometimes it's even worse than that. I remember reading about a case where this young girl was growing up and she had this male, fr you know, her, their families were friends and she had known this young boy since she was, you know, in grade school. And then she's around 14 or 15. Him and a group of his friends abducted her off the street and took her into some building and raped her. And, you know, they was doing the whole take a turn thing. And when it came time for this little boy, to do instead of him 
you know, using his, going to some corner or something, calling 911 to help his friend, calling his friend's mama or daddy, calling his mama or daddy. What he did was join in the rape. And then when she was crying and asking him why he was doing that, he was like, well, you know, these are my friends. I have to be, you know, I have to do part, I need to be part of the group. So he needed, he needed to be identified as part of that group of boys more than he did to stand on his own, be a man, and do what he knew was the right thing to do. So that's what happens with these guys. You know, you see them attack women, like one will start attacking, and then here come four, five, six, eight more to join in. It's like this pack mentality. Um, and they, these are the guys who seek the approval of other men. Like They'll be like, well, you know, you need to keep your B in check. Instead of him saying, you know, don't be calling my woman a B. You know, what the fuck is your problem? They don't say that. They just, well, he, you know, uh, yeah, man, you know, I, I, she just out of control. You know, I got to get her, I got to get her in shape, you know, man, you know. <laughs> and so, or another thing that they'll do. It's like, say, the guy has a, you know, he's a kid, a young man, whatever, and he has a girlfriend who's maybe a little plump, right? Now, he loves her. He likes to cush. He, you know, he just thinks this is just this wonderfulness, all soft and firm, you know, firm in the right spots and soft and everything's pillowy and nice. And he just like, ooh, yes. But do you think he has the courage to say that? He lets his, his friends sit there and talk about his girlfriend being being a whale, a blimp, all, you know, all these negative things, and he'll never speak, he won't speak up for her. He'll just like laugh, and like he's, you know, he's just going along with it, or yeah, you know, I'm just using her, I'm just, he's going to make some excuse to these guys to make them think he thinks like they do, like he's part of whatever they're, you know, they're, what they got going on. That's more important to these kind of guys than it is to stand up and say, look, that's what I like, motherfucker. You don't like it. You don't have to. But that's what I like. And shut your fucking mouth before I bust your teeth out. See, now they won't say stuff like that. But, you know, that's, that's what would be necessary. You got to shut them down and show them that you are independent, an independent thinker. But these guys aren't. They're a group thinker. And they, that's why when we see them come from on from the MGTOW, they all say the same thing. Did you notice that? It's like they have a script and they say the exact same thing things over and over and over and over again it's like oh my god do you guys ever have like a uh, an original thought in your big head it's just unbelievable and then the last one i call it chicken littling do you remember that story chicken little where he went around telling everybody that the sky is falling. I remember that story from childhood. And that's what I see these guys as chicken littles. So I call it with their behavior chicken littling. But in other words, they believe that, you know, everything is going to, to hell in a handbasket and that the world is awful and that nothing's ever going to be better and it's just disgusting and it's something that they need to escape and you know usually they say it's women's fault though that everything in the world that including global warming is the fault of women (laughs) and you know it's just it's unbelievable so these guys um they just don't realize that, you know, if you, I mean, there's good and bad in everything. There's good and bad in men, good and bad in women, good and bad neighborhoods. There's good and bad gas for your car. There's good and bad tires. You see what I mean? Good and bad quality of food. So when you talk about a relationship and you talk about people, there's going to be good and there's going to be bad. There's going to be joyful and there's going to be hurtful. That's life. That's just, just, just how it is. But men that with literally low self-esteem don't seem to want to accept that. They don't understand that how the world is what it is, but our perception of it is based on how we are. So if you see negativity in everything, that means the negativity is you. That's the source of the negativity. And, you know, you can acknowledge that there are, like I said, the reality is this is good and bad. You know, there's people out here committing crimes and doing murders. And there's people doing everything they can to make their neighborhoods, their homes, their the lives of seniors, the lives of children better. So, I mean, for every yin, there's a yang. For every up, there's a down, right and left, hot and cold up. You know, I mean, north and south. I mean, there's always an opposite to whatever the negative is but these guys want to focus on the bad blame women for it like I said 99% of the time and um, and never look at the fact that their their negative mindset is what's causing them to be so fearful and anxious 
and uh, to be so worried about everything. They, you know, they just they want like a, a man who's secured himself, a man who's confident, a man who has high self esteem is is he's not gonna throw his hands up in disgust. He gonna push up his sleeves and get busy making it different, making his reality happen. But these guys don't have the confidence in themselves, right? So they just let things go as they are. So that's my summation of uh, low self-esteem. There's, of course, plenty more that I could say on this topic. But um, I'll leave it for you guys to discuss in the comment section below. You know, some of, some of the things that I propose. And I'm sure you have some other insight into behaviors that you've experienced in your own relationships, in your own family, and the men that you personally know. But these, you know, these are pretty broad umbrellas and they, there's a lot of details, like I said, that will be, that will fall under each one. But I'm telling you, a man with low self-esteem is just lost. He can't do anything. He can't lead. He can't even lead himself, let alone a wife and family. He will never really be successful at anything. He's just going to drift through life and just get on everybody's nerves while he's drifting. He's going to even get on his own nerves. These guys are just sad. And if you get in a relationship with them, then they cling to you like white on rice. And they just are um, sometimes... Be sometimes very dependent on you and at other times even though they are dependent they're not going to let you know because they're hiding right they're being self-limiting and uh, he's going to then instead project negativity and be abusive to you because these guys are the ones who cheat these are the ones who lie these are the ones who attack women and commit domestic violence they're low they have low self-esteem and it's at the core of every bit of manhood Every component of manhood, self-esteem and confidence are at the at the core of it. So a man who has low self-esteem and who has no confidence in himself is not a man. He knows he's not. There's nothing about him that's manly. And so he feels like a failure, which he is. And you, then here you come trying to think that you, you know, you're loving him is going to prop him up and save him. All that's going to happen is you're going to end up in that hole with him. So you better think about that. This is Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I'm asking for your participation in a survey. I'm gathering some data on male violence when faced with rejection from women. Share your personal stories or stories that you know, as you've heard firsthand from family or friends. I'd like to hear what's, what's been going on out there with you. A link can be found in the show description page below. Please respond as soon as you can. I'd like to, pr to process all the information that I receive and produce the show and have it live on the channel before the end of February when Video A Day February ends, all right? If you have any questions, write me at survivingdating at gmail.com. Feel free to share that link to your social media walls and to your friends. Thanks.